that's going. Um, so this week for BU Sex Seminar, first one of the semester, welcome everybody. Uh, we have Mingyu Liang, who is a PhD student joining us from George Mason University. And uh, title of today's talk is Differentially Private Mixing for Cryptocurrencies. And take it away. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, it's a very pleasure to be here to give my um, presentation on the research topic of uh, differential private mixing for cryptocurrency. So um, a, a little bit introduced about uh, introduction about myself. I'm a third year PhD student at George Mason University, and uh, I mostly work on differential privacy and a little bit of oblivious rent. And recently, I also moved on to secure multi-party computation. And I'm particularly interested in using the concept of differential privacy to relax the full security or the fully oblivious algorithm to create a more efficient solution. So um, for today's work, uh, it's done with Fotini and Dov, who are both uh, George Mason University uh, professors. Uh, Iona is a um, third year uh, PhD student just like me. And I believe uh, everyone knows Mayak, and I don't, uh, I won't need to introduce him anymore. Okay. Okay. So our research tackled the uh, anonymity issues in cryptocurrency. So for example, the most popular one, Bitcoin, uh, its transactions are only pseudo anonymous and are linkable to each other. Uh, in particular, edges belong to the same user can be revealed through a simple transaction pattern. So for example, let's consider the case uh, on the top right uh, graph. Uh, let's say Alice want to make a transaction of a total of 7.5 bitcoins to Bob. Um, in order to have sufficient funds, she need to combine all her three edges. Um, and then uh, in the end also, she will get a change of 0 0.5 bitcoin uh, and deposit to another of her edges. So the problem of such a clear uh, transaction graph is that um, if any one of these edges, uh, any one of these three input edges is exposed due to the external information or some adversary behavior, then uh, it will be very reasonable for the adversary to assume that all the input edges in, the, in, in this transaction belong to the same party. And even more, it's usually not that hard to distinguish which output address belong to Bob and which output address is the change uh, back to Alice. Um, sometimes people uh, use output address, uh, will use then um, uh, to receive funds for multiple tides, uh, while the uh, address for change is usually freshly generated by the uh, wallet that is uh, used to implement the Bitcoin. So um, in this case, one can just keep, um, just look on the blockchain to determine which are change and grow the cluster of edges that uh, belong to Alice. Okay, so it's possible to use this techniques uh, combined with some external data and uh, even active attack to do a large scale uh, de-anonymization. Uh, one example is showed in, um, uh, back in 2013, the Moko published a paper showing that this can be used to uh, de-anonymize uh, many large uh, service of the Bitcoins. So there are multiple efforts to break this linkage of this uh, transaction graph. Um, so for the first line of research is just derived on the all good uh, mixing mechanism. Um, so here, let's consider that we have a group of four parties. Uh, their goal is to mix their account with each other. So to do that, they each have uh, generate a freshly new uh, output address, which is uh, uh, identity is not linked to them. And what they would do is they would like to have their coin to transfer from their own input address uh, to the new output address. So to do that using some sort of a missing mechanism, which can be uh, implemented using a centralized fashion, uh, for example, like uh, there is a third party taking all the coins of every, everybody and then distribute this coin back to the uh, new output address. Um, and also they can implement this mixing using a, a secure multi-party um, computation um, protocol. Um, it, essentially, it, uh, this um, transaction is also made using a conjunct, which is a feature of Bitcoin that allowed a 
single contra uh, single transaction to contain multiple parties input and multiple parties output. So in the end, we say that this create an anonymity set of sites for that include these four parties. So any of these address can be owned by any uh, of these input party. Okay. So apparently the set, uh, uh, the size of this set is very important. Otherwise, uh, just a few compromised user can really endanger the privacy of the rest of the uh, users. So the second nice of efforts for breaking the linkage is to just decide a standalone private cryptocurrency. So two of the most popular ones are Monero and Zcash. Uh, so our, ad, uh, our research are actually uh, ha heavily based on the um, uh, ring-based anonymous transaction of Monero. So we are going to talk a bit in detail later, but here I just give a high level idea. Uh, essentially, uh, like before, let's say Alice want to make a transaction and she can also use the um, uh, input address from the REST3 party as the fake input for this transaction. So for this transaction, it will look like that uh, either one of these four party make this transaction, but for the adversary, uh, it cannot tell which one exactly made this transaction. So um, another very popular solution is Zcash. Um, Zcash um, is composed of two parts. It has transparent coins and shielded coins. So the transparent part is just like Bcoin, where the uh, transaction graph is clear. Um, and for the shield coin, uh, it, it used the zero knowledge proof uh, essentially to hide the uh, input address and output address. So for example, Alice here again, uh, let's say that uh, she holds um, uh, uh, open uh, and uh, um, transparent coins and she can make a transaction to one of these shield edges in the uh, what we call a shield pool. Um, so in this transaction, all the errors we see is just Alice using potentially her, her address to pay some of the address in the shield pool, but which address no one knows. And she can also continue to make shielded transaction with completely in this shield pool by uh, paying a transaction from one shielded address to another shielded address. And no one knows which address it is uh, in this shield pool. And she can finally come clean by making a transaction from the shielded address to a, yes. Do you have a question? Uh, question. Um, sorry, I, I can't quite hear you. Okay. Uh, I, I, I guess I'll just continue for now. So, um, so finally, uh, Alice can also make a transaction from a shield edges. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, I, uh, I had a question. Can you hear me? I hope can you hear me. Uh, so, so uh, are you talking about uh, uh, breaking the linkage on the? Um, Ron, you're cutting out a bit. Would you mind typing the question in the chat if you can hear us? Okay, uh, I guess keep going and I'll see if I can get the question. Okay. Okay, so, uh, so finally, Zcash can also make a transition from one of the shield edges to a uh, 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 transparent address. So there are some limits for the current solution. Um, so for example, for Bitcoin, which used with Conjun, uh, there's no, no more than 470 inputs outputs in a single transaction. Uh, this is limited by the uh, size of a uh, single block on blockchain. And also the computation cost per party is linear to the anonymity set size. So rec recall that we said the size of anonymity set is very important. So if we want to scale this, this is not going to scale well for the, uh, each party. And for the Monero, by default, uh, it only required each party to mix with a group of 11 inputs. So this actually uh, has a very small um, input anonymity set. And also the computation code for a single transaction is linear to the input set size. Again, if you want to have large, very large anonymity set, 
then this is not going to scale well. And for Zcash, actually, it's um, in terms of computation call, it's actually quite e efficient. It also offers stronger privacy if everyone used the shield version. But the current adoption rate is probably around 10%. So most of the transactions are actually um, transparent, just like in Bitcoin. Um, um, so when this um, as so this actually can lead to quite a identifiable spending pattern on Zcash also, and the current implementation of uh, Zcash require a trust setup, and it also has method to uh, do it without trust setup, but it's uh, much less efficient with, uh, without it. Okay. Quick, quick question. Sure. Um, just in terms of the the computation cost per party in the Bitcoin coin joint thing. In terms of like concrete costs, is that like seconds, milliseconds, minutes? Like, what's the order of the length of that conversation? Well, actually, um, uh, that's a good question. I, I don't know the answer for that question, but I, I'm pretty sure this it's a practical result. So people have been using the conjunct uh, to uh, mix uh, in in Bitcoin. Yeah. So um, yeah. Sorry. We also have Ron's question from earlier. So he says, uh, I wanted to ask whether you're only talking about breaking the linkage on the cryptographic level rather than on the networking or timing level, or are you addressing those aspects as well? Um, we are just on the cryptography level. So on the uh, level level, we assume that that's uh, Tor or any of the anonymous uh, communication uh, the two already. Yeah. Okay. Um, so to state our formal goals, it's that we want to preserve privacy in cryptocurrency uh, with a formal privacy guarantee and security under composability. Um, so we want to accommodate very, very large uh, anonymity set, potentially even n equal to uh, hundreds of thousands. And ideally, we do not require, we, don't, we do not want to rely on trust data and any tr trust or untrust third parties and finally, in order for it to scale well, um, we want sublinear computation cost per party. Okay. So how do we do that? Uh, we do it by allowing some control to leakage. Okay. So as our solution is heavily based on the ring signature based uh, anonymous transaction, so let's uh, take a quick view of ring signature here. Um, so recall in the ordinary signature, Alice uh, uh, used her private key to sign a message or a transaction uh, in our contest. And later, everyone else who possesses uh, Alice's public key can verify this transaction. And in the ring signature, again, let's say Alice wants to sign a transaction, she can also use um, Bob's and Carol's public key to co sign this transaction. And people can verify this transaction using Alice, Bob, and Carol's public key, but they cannot know which one of this Alice, Bob, and Carol actually used the secret key to sign this uh, transaction. Okay. So using this um, ring signature, it's possible to create an anonymous transaction that uh, effectively hide the uh, real input. So in this case, we call the um, uh, input that it's the real is uh, as the real in, in standard and the uh, we call the a fake input x the mixing and the uh, um, real spender and the mixing together form the uh, input set of the uh, ring signature so for example like here let's say that we have two transactions uh, where i highlight the real spender in the blue color so for transaction one uh, Alice is making a transaction to uh, Dave, and she also used the public key of B, uh, uh, Bob and Carol uh, to co-sign this transaction, while in the transaction two, Carol can uh, separately make a, a transaction to Edward and use Bob's public key to sign this transaction. So um, in Monero, um, it's usually the address is just used once, so, so here we simplify our graph by having removing the blue uh, gray dot by having the input directly point to its output address. So uh, once you should remember that uh, if you see multiple edges pointing to uh, one output address, then this, ad, uh, this address uh, uh, belonging to uh, one single transaction. 
So, so one of the problem of just doing uh, doing um, um, obfuscation like this is that let's say the bot make another transaction and for some reason this transaction is exposed. So um, when you look on the second transaction where you had possible input of Bob and Carol, since we said that our address is only used once, we know that Carol must be the real spender for this transaction. And since Bob and Carol um, already pick a transaction somewhere else, then we know for the first transaction, Alice is the only valid uh, real spender for this transaction. So this is kind of a cascading attack that uh, it's, it sits in um, in the very beginning of the Monero road. And basically it, um, this shows that um, if someone lost their privacy, not only did they lost the privacy, they also affect the privacy of the others. I have a quick question. Uh, yeah. So this assumption that each address only receives one transaction, is this something that is sort of inherent to Monero or is this an assumption you're making for this paper? So. So this is the uh, inherent in Monero, and actually the uh, one time use uh, of address is also all advocate in Bitcoin. So okay. if you use address again and again, of course you, you are more likely to get exposed. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. So um, we can use the ring signature to uh, construct a very naive solution to build a, a full size, uh, uh, any size long limit set. So recall that in mixing, we said that we want to have uh, some party to take part in the mixing. Eventually the goal is to have their coin to deposit to some of the address in the output set and no one knows the mapping between the inputs and the outputs. Okay. So in this case, uh, Alice can use the ring signature to create a transaction to uh, her address in the output set while drawing in the uh, fake inputs of the, all the rest of the parties. So everybody do this. Uh, so, so Bob also do this uh, using one, three, four uh, fake uh, inputs. And so does Carol and Dave. So eventually this transaction graph will just look like a click and it's possible for the, uh, any mapping to, the, uh, to define this uh, transaction graph. Okay. But of course, the big issue here is that the computation, total computation core is going to be quadratic um, since the, here the uh, computation core is roughly the, equal to the number of edge in this transaction graph. Okay. So the overview of our construction is to take what we already showed to how to create a very small anonymity set and we argument this small anonymity set using mixing network, in which case we use butterfly network. And eventually we create a large anonymity set, but with some control leakage. And finally, we prove this leakage is satisfied differential privacy. Okay, okay one, one more question from Ron uh, from the chat. Yeah. Uh, he says, I don't understand how ring signatures would be used. From which account does the money come out? Oh, so which account? So the, the money comes from the real uh, spender. I guess the question is uh, like, what what does the, um, like what is the signature, I guess for like, how, how can you do, how can you figure out whether somebody else, uh, you know, has sufficient, I guess, funds to transfer it out because you can't just add up all of the transactions somebody has, has made to see whether they have. Right, right. So, so, so that's a way to prove that, uh, I think it's a range of proof to prove that your uh, input address uh, has enough fund for this transaction. And actually, it's not that uh, uh, there can only be one real uh, spender in the ring, uh, uh, in this ring. So um, you need to have a range of proof to prove that your transaction has, uh, which is also a zero knowledge proof to prove that you have sufficient fund. And I think one, one relevant question is that, uh, since you don't know how the, which one is actually the real spender, how do you prevent uh, double spending? Uh, like how, how do you prevent people from spending the, their coins again? So uh, in, in this Monero, it also has, uh, um, while you're generating the transaction, you only generate a key image that is uh, relevant to the secret key for your input address. So once that you 
generate this key image, uh, they cannot link this key image to the real spender, of course, but uh, if you, in the future, you want to double spend this coin again, you will have to generate a, a, a similar key image that can be linked. So this can also prevent the double spending. Interesting. Uh, Ron, does that answer your question? Yes, I guess so. But I, I guess I have to understand more how Bonaire does it, but I guess that's not the topic of this talk. Okay. The, I'm sorry, just one more quick question. So yeah. the the use of ring signatures here kind of leverages the fact that Monero already supports ring signatures naturally, but we've kind of departed from the Bitcoin world where Bitcoin doesn't have any support for a ring signature and require a fork of some variety. Right. Um, so we're kind of, we're, we're zooming in kind of on augmenting Monero as opposing to kind of like a general form changing all cryptocurrencies type thing. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, so let's pick up. Um, so our last step is to introduce um, the technique we use to augment this small analytic set, which is mixing network. So we use butterfly level in particular. Um, so here it's a two area A size butterfly network and the A size is simply the number of nodes in each layer. And two area means that uh, every node has two uh, algorithm degree or have a branch better of two um, for, um, for uh, below. Um, so we call the first layer of nodes as input nodes uh, and the last layer of nodes as output nodes. Okay. So um, the reason it's called butterfly level is that you can draw this uh, collection of collected nodes kind of join this uh, same butterfly pattern again and again. So for the first layer, um, let's say that if you represent all these uh, nodes using their binary representation, you want to pair up those that differ only in the most significant, uh, significant bits. So in this case, zero's uh, binary representation is zero, 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 and four is one, zero, zero. So you pair these two up, and also pair this uh, one and five, two and six, kind of shifting your butterfly patterns uh, in the same layer. And then for the last layer, uh, you actually can see that uh, uh, we kind of shrink the, the width of the butterfly and in this layer, we essentially pair up those that differ only in the second most significant, uh, significant bits. Okay. So in the file layer, it, you pair those that differ only in the least significant bit. Okay. So uh, one imp important fact of this butterfly level is that uh, there exists a, a unique path from any input nodes to uh, any output nodes. And the depth of this uh, level is just a uh, log base Kn. So the number of edges is simply n nodes times the branch factor k uh, times the uh, depth of this uh, network. Okay, so now we show a toy example of how to use the butterfly level to augment in the small dollar meaning set. So in this case, again, let's say that I want two, three, four, want to miss their coin. And let's for now that we assume there is a way to pick, uh, randomly pick a permutation to position their output edges. So let's say one go to here and two and three basically uh, swap their position and four also go to the address directly below, okay? So since um, the transaction is going to make following the underlying the network of butterfly, so there exists a unique path uh, for any input address to any output address. So once they know that where the output address is, they can define this path and they will create an intermediate layer address in the intermediate layer. So eventually the value is going to transfer from their input address to their intermediate layer address and finally to the output layer address. Okay. So Clearly, this actually does not have any effect of missing as someone can directly link this uh, input and output address together. So our first effort 
it's to make uh, edges in, within the same bucket to be indistinguishable. So uh, intuitively, every address uh, in the, within the same bucket should have the same incoming address and outgoing address. Okay. So to do this, we can use a ring signature. Um, for example, let's say user make the first round of transaction to the intermediate ad, uh, layer address here, we require that he uh, follows the uh, underlying butterfly network collection to also use the address of one as the fake input. And for one, we also require uh, she to use the address of three as the fake input. So now you can see that for the intermediate address one and three, um, at least from the incoming address, they are dis indistinguishable since they both have the ring signature that include the address of one and address of three. Okay. So they do the same thing for the second round of transaction. So now that the one and three is fully indistinguishable. So similarly for two and four, they use the same way, uh, basically using the butterfly level to determine which address they should uh, roll in. And um, eventually this will um, make sure that uh, the only thing that it's leaked is the number of address within the same buckets. So intuitively this breaks a, a single transaction with a large ring as uh, we discussed in the uh, naive solution into the multiple rounds of trans transaction with smaller rings. Okay. I have another question, sorry. Maybe, maybe you're about, actually, uh, I guess maybe you're about to say this, but what gets, what is known is the thing that is public, which nodes have transactions occurring or mm -hmm. like um, what, what is the, the thing that is known to everybody in this? I see. Um, so basically everything is uh, eventually published to the blockchain. So in the blockchain, you will see here, for example, you will see a transaction that it's uh, possible from the input one and input three uh, pay to uh, the output one. So the intermediate address one, and also you will see uh, basically each node here will correspond to a transaction where the input set is the address point to this node. Yeah, so, so I guess, can, can you see that for instance, you know, either one or three paid one, or can you see either one or three paid one or three? Does that? Yeah, that's... yes. In, yeah, in this case, yes. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to get about this. In this case, okay. actually, sorry, but... you can see that uh, the first two output address must come from one and three, right? In this case, yeah. Yeah, I'll just let you keep going. And I'll yeah. ask again okay. in two minutes if I'm still confused. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a very good transition to my last slide. Okay, so the question is like in the other case, let's say that we use a different permutation, for example, an identity permutation, how will it change the intermediate layer? So in this case, if everyone just pay the address directly below, you can imagine they will use the um, buckets right below their, uh, their input address. In this case, uh, you should actually see one address in each of these buckets. Okay, so this actually brings us to the differential privacy because we want to argue there are some form of privacy to prevent uh, uh, the adversary from um, just uh, know the actual permutation from this uh, clear pattern. So again, we bring out the case before where the, uh, we had permutation of one, three, two, four, and we uh, bring out one of its labeling permutation, uh, which is identity permutation. As you can see, the intermediate bucket nodes are, are different. So um, we here we define, <coughs> excuse me. So here we define a labeling permutation as the permutation that only have a swap distance of one, and or you can you think of it as a transport di uh, session distance of one. So basically like here, let's say that we swap any pair of uh, output elements, we have a uh, labeling permutation, okay? So as you can see, this has a totally different uh, middle in the middle layer pattern. So I'll go it's to hide this. So for those who are familiar with differential privacy, this is actually 
maybe you can already see now that this is a quite classical example of histogram that we want to preserve privacy for this uh, output. And so in this case, um, let's say that uh, the, the real input is corresponding to the pi, it's here. Uh, you want to hide this, we can add uh, a certain amount of noise in each of these buckets. So eventually we also require the noise the address should follow the same uh, rules, uh, the butterfly level to determine their, uh, uh, which uh, their input sets and their uh, outgoing address. So eventually we can make uh, noise the address indistinguishable with the real address. And for the outsider, they would just see a noisy sum of uh, address within each bucket. So um, one thing to mention that since this address is actually corresponding to a transaction that is paid to this uh, address. So we uh, additionally require the transferred value to be hidden. So this can be done uh, using a tiny called uh, confidential transaction. So now since the uh, real address and noise address are indistinguishable, it will be plausible to explain for this uh, intermediate layer pattern to explain uh, both this pi and its label implementation pi pi. So here it's a formal definition for differential prior mixing. Um, so let L be a randomized algorithm that only receives a permutation as an input. We say that L is epsilon delta differential prior if for any two label in inputs permutation, pi and pi pi, and for any subset of the all possible outcomes, uh, the probability that it's generated by pi, it, it's almost likely as it's generated by pi pi. So uh, the effect is that this make the adversary hard to, um, um, giving the adversary a hard time to, uh, what, upon giving a leakage, uh, it, it's hard to determine whether it's coming from any pair of uh, uh, laboring uh, permutation. Okay. So one of the very interesting thing here is that uh, what happens if you uh, iteratively do this DP mixing? So um, uh, some earlier critic we have, and also some of the people who had uh, heard of Wawatsu um, and uh, Stadium before might think if we do the uh, DP mixing again and again, we will degrade the uh, uh, privacy parameters. So however, this is not the case in our protocol because in our protocol, in each tide, uh, independent permutation is sampled for each mixing. So uh, you can think of it as if you have a weak shuffle. And if you do this weak shuffle again and again, you're only going to get a stronger shuffle rather than even weakening your original shuffle. So we formally proved this intuition by showing that if you have two rounds of differential power shuffle, uh, a differential power mixing each with epsilon zero and delta zero uh, uh, parameters, um, if you uh, basically concatenate these two uh, mixing, uh, 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 these two rounds of mixing, so eventually you will have uh, equivalently a mixing that has a better uh, epsilon and delta uh, parameter than the original uh, one round epsilon zero and delta zero. So this uh, answers some, uh, some of the concerns of people saying that if we uh, apply differential prior mixing, on uh, cryptocurrency since people are always mixing and eventually this privacy is going to uh, degrade very fast. Okay, but in our case, we show that the more mixing you do, the stronger privacy you will get. Okay. So um, to determine that this is actually a good case for using differential privacy uh, and especially to determine the noise magnitude we need, uh, we need to study the sensitivity of how the um, uh, of this um, of this our, our algorithm. So uh, in this case, basically sensitivity captured how sensitive the output um, will change if we switch on from any uh, if we switch from any pair of uh, label implementation. Um, so in this case, let's say that we have pi and pi pi, and they are labeling by the swapping the output address of uh, 3, 2, and 3, 5 here. Okay, so, so let's say that uh, if we, we switch from uh, the blue 
pi to the yellow pi pi. Uh, as you can see, this will just entirely change the pair from um, uh, going through one four two four to going through one zero and two two. So this will reduce the number of real edges in one four and two four by one while increasing the number of uh, real edges in one zero and two two by, by one. So it has the similar effect from the another change of path. So eventually the sensitivity per layer uh, of uh, inter intermediate buckets is just um, um, in the worst case, uh, there are two buckets that has one more address and two buckets that has uh, one less address. So in order, in order to sample the noise uh, for this, each of this bucket, uh, we first notice that since uh, in this case, we need to create a, a actual, an actual uh, noisy address for each noise that we sample. Um, so we will like this uh, mechanism to sample non-negative integer. And also we would like to uh, distribute this responsibility of sampling noise uniformly to all n parties so that no interaction is required in order to sample this noise, uh, it would be nice to have infinite divisibility so that we can have each one just sample a small amount of noise. So uh, we use Poisson uh, distribution because it satisfies this, uh, both this uh, property. So in particular, let's say the P uh, lambda here refer to a Poisson distribution with a mean of lambda. So uh, it, uh, it holds the following additive property that um, let's say that eventually you want to have P lambda noise in, within a bucket, you can have uh, each of the N party, each sample from a P lambda divided by M distribution. And then when you sum up all these noises, you, you equivalently, you will be uh, just simply want um, uh, one noise, uh, one just sampling directly from the p lambda distribution. Okay, so so eventually uh, we use Poisson mechanism, and then we uh, make a slightly really better proof uh, than uh, TRD back in two thousand seventeen uh, for uh, uh, its delta one and delta two. Basically, it's the left tail bound and the right tail bound. And also the, we have the figure 14 showing that this uh, leakage function is differential private and uh, the absolute delta we get giving the uh, basically link back to the uh, noise magnitude lambda that we use. Okay, so notice that D, here D is the number of intermediate layers. Uh, intuitively, if you have more layers uh, for your butterfly network, you ha also have more sensitivity. So. You, you either have to uh, use more noise or you will have uh, degrading the uh, privacy parameter. Okay. Um, okay, so, so here are just a few more uh, protocol details. So um, I think I, okay. So, so, so one thing I want to mention uh, specifically here, is that uh, uh, remember in the beginning, we said that uh, we assume that there is a way to determine the uh, output address position. But uh, in order to do this uh, without uh, relying on a further anonymous broadcasting uh, functionality, uh, we actually can do this by simply let uh, each party to randomly pick uh, an uh, output position. So in this case, since they are doing this without coordinating with each other, so the um, output address can potentially collide with a single node. So we also change the output layer to the output bucket. Okay. So um, again, they just sample the, um, the real address in the intermediate layer once they know where they should go to in the output layer. And at the same time, they also, each of them also sample some amount of noisy edges within each bucket. Okay. And then, um, this address, uh, this intermediate address and output address are only published after the transaction are actually made on the blockchain. So the transaction is proceed round by round. So each round, they're using the input address following the underlying butterfly network. 
And then the, once they publish this transaction, they also include a small piece of information on which bucket this address is in, so that uh, for the last round of transaction, they can again rely on the butterfly network uh, connection to determine which address they should include in their uh, input set. So hopefully I have convinced you that the, all the information leaked in this transaction graph is just the number of nodes or uh, number of edges within each bucket. So in terms of cost, uh, we show that the computation call, which is uh, linear to the number of input edges uh, per transaction, and the total cost is roughly equal to the number of edges in the whole transaction graph. So uh, the total computation call using the naive approach, uh, as we discussed at the very beginning, is quadratic. So if we use a uh, one layer uh, butterfly network, basically we only have uh, one intermediate layer, we reduce this to uh, n to the one point, a power of 1.5. So that's a square root of n per party computation call. And we can further reduce this to n poly log n for the, if we have more layers. But uh, uh, for the issue of having more layers is we also have a higher sensitivity so that in the end, we actually need to use more noise for this. Um, so um, the problem with Poisson is that uh, its noise magnitude doesn't scale very well with, uh, um, with the um, sensitivity, the increase of sensitivity. So this is actually, uh, we have a log to the power of five M parameters for two area case. So um, for the communication cost, um, it's usually dominated by the size of the signature or the proof. Um, then, and the latest techniques for this, it's, it can have a logarithm size to the number of input edges. So in this case, a uh, naive approach actually offered the best uh, possible uh, uh, syntactic outcome. Uh, while increasing the uh, number of intermediate layers, it's going to make this uh, cost even worse. Uh, intuitively, this is because with a uh, logarithm size ring signature, it's actually more preferable to have less transaction with bigger rings rather than to have more transaction with smaller rings. So eventually we'll think of uh, our work as a, um, since many words are um, focusing on reducing the communication cost, uh, eventually if you want to scale up this to very large end, uh, the bottleneck is going to be the computation cost again. So we kind of providing a trade-off to um, reduce the computation cost by uh, slightly increasing the uh, uh, communication cost. So even our work, it's mostly theoretical. We also uh, show that it's uh, possible to um, have some uh, practical uh, parameters. Uh, so for example, if we set private uh, epsilon equal to 2.3 and delta equal to 10 to the negative four, um, the noise magnitude um, of Poisson distribution uh, will be 73. And then um, it, uh, it's actually it, when n is large, roughly larger than 1160a, um, our one layer approach will uh, begin to outperform the naive approach. Um, we also use an addition technique called merge bucket, uh, which allow us to um, roughly reduce the amount of uh, noise that we use in the whole uh, transition graph, but uh, we may not have time to go over that. Um, so basically it shows that for some uh, n equal to more than 1000, it's uh, starting to gain, uh, uh, outperform the naive approach. Okay. So for the security uh, analysis, we provide two security definition. So one of them is a simulation-based definition in the universally composable security framework for the case of missing coins of equal value. So uh, it's actually quite, uh, um, it's quite, it's actually not trivial to prove this for the uh, missing coins of different value because uh, eventually the simulator need to uh, be able to simulate the whole transaction graph given the leakage without knowing the actual mapping of the uh, honest party. So if we have, assuming that each coin have the same value, we can just have the simulator to randomly pick uh, any permutation to route the coin to uh, one of the output edges. But with different value, we still need to know the uh, exact mapping. 
So um, in addition to this uh, simulation-based diffusion, we provide a, a gate-based diffusion that supports of mixing of variable values and that explicitly uh, specify the adversary advantage in distinguishing uh, neighboring permutations. Okay. So uh, finally, I just want to informally mention uh, some of the uh, attack uh, that malicious user can do. For example, uh, let's consider user bot. Um, so unlike the mixing mechanism uh, before us, um, which you, which a user bot usually means that they need to restart the protocol and potentially evict the malicious user. Uh, in our case, we have no attempt to detect uh, uh, user bots or any malicious user behavior. So this is mainly because uh, the transaction of the value is done by the uh, user um, herself. So you only handle your own transaction value. So. Um, abortion uh, from the malicious user cannot really hinder the honest user from transfer, transferring their own values. And even the abort can happen in any phase, but we can simply assume that in the end, all aborted or semi-honest parties just publicly reveal all their real and noisy edges. So this will reduce the effective anonymity set to uh, the size of M minus F, uh, assuming F is number of parties that uh, are malicious. And also, this will uh, um, reduce the noise magnitude to N minus F divided by N, uh, because we mentioned that uh, noise uh, responsibility are uniformly distributed to all N parties. Uh, but still, the differential private guarantee um, will still hold for partial permutation among the uh, undisclosed uh, N minus F honest users and uh, a privacy parameter will always uh, smartly degrading. Um, and the later issue can be addressed quite easily by increasing the noise magnitude to offset this potential loss of uh, noise. Okay. okay, so in conclusion, uh, we present a protocol which has the following strengths. So first of all, the computation time for mixing n address, it's the uh, O uh, n polylog n compared to the quadratic cost before. And in our protocol, we offer a smooth tolerance of self stop adversary. So if a party abort, uh, it just slightly reduces the privacy, but the, continue, uh, the protocol can continue to uh, um, go on. Um, and also, we do not require any trust setup like Zcash. And finally, our construction is use this queue uh, for the mixing of the same coin. And there are some weaknesses of our protocol also. Um, so first of all, we do not provide full anonymity, but rather bound the leakage using the definition of differential privacy. And also, the, uh, like all mixing protocols, we can only mix uh, edges of the online parties. Okay, uh, so actually that's all of my uh, presentation. And uh, thank you very much for listening and I'm happy to add any questions. Uh, I have a question, I have a couple yeah. of questions. Um, so, uh, uh, let's see, about noise, yeah, uh, you, you said you use Poisson noise, right? Yes. And that's because you want the uh, you want to have this decompose decomposition property where you can have different people select the noise and um and have it like produce you know a, a um, uh, like have it have it add up to the thing the the total kind of ha have the in the the sum of a bunch of independent random variables of this type add to another random variable of that type, right? Right, right. So this is more of a comment than um, a question, but if you want to have epsilon zero differential privacy, there's a way of doing this, but you don't, so your your quantities are integers, so you can use like geometric noise if you if you if you could like sample 
the noise kind of in some central way using like a, an MPC protocol, you could use geometric noise. Right, right. There is a distribution such that like, you know, a, N IID copies of that thing will add to a geometric random variable. It's just, mm. it's not a geometric distribution. Mm. Um, it has a few names. It's like some special case of the gamma distribution. It's called polia distribution. Anyway, I can send you a link. So people have used this in a number of other contexts. Oh, um, yeah. And I'm happy to send you a link for it if, uh, if you'd like. Oh, yeah, that's actually very interesting. So um, um, can I ask a question? Uh, so you mean that each party can always just sample a non-negative number of noise? Yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah so it's a distribution over integers. Mm -hmm. That is, it's, a, it's mean 0 and you know, very small variance. But when you, and when you add it up, it, like the, you can figure out what the variance has to be. It's not that, you know, that's just a, like the variance has to be one over n times the final variance you want. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not a geometric random variable. It's some other distribution that adds to geometric. I see. It turns out there are like lots of distributions that have this divisibility property, but not kind of with respect to themselves. So they, mm -hmm. uh, like they can be written as sums of some other thing. I see. I see. Uh, that's actually quite interesting because one of the limits here is that uh, the boson noise it actually does not scale well for large sensitivity. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, right, and the, uh, and the delta parameter you get is going to get in the way, right? The, the log one over delta factors are going to be big. Right, right. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah so in general, there, there's sort of a connection to what's called the shuffle model in differential privacy, where people randomize their values separately and then throw them into a, well, a mixed net. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're, uh, you know, permuted. And what the adversary sees is the permuted list of, of um, right. reports. And it, it, it turns out there's a bunch of kind of clever things people have done in that model uh, recently. And it's also connected to some other work in, on, on um, multi-party computation with where you use a mixed net as like a basic primitive and you can do all sorts of things information theoretically conditioned on having that mixed net. Hmm. Uh, so there's, there's sort of a, a, a bunch of papers on this so-called shuffle model that have appeared in the last two or three years, uh, even less than that, a year and a half or something, that you might find um, give you some like uh, give you some tools that you could just like use here directly. And this polio distribution is an example of that. Although the distribution itself is like, you know, hundred years old. I see. And actually, I, I think I read some of these uh, 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 shuffling modeled uh, uh, papers. And I think in there, they use the uh, uh, perfect shuffle or they just simply assume that uh, shuffle is a trust party. That's right. That's right. Yes. So, so, so I was actually also looking in another direction. Is that whether, if let's say that we have some sort of a differential private shuffle, whether we can replace a, a perfect shuffle with a differential private shuffle, and then this uh, private meta a parameter we compose with the later uh, data analysis phase uh, private parameter. Oh, yeah. That's a really interesting question. I don't know the answer. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that would be very nice if you could do. I mean, it would be especially nice if if there's a reason to see this differentially private shuffle as like having property, you know, like it, its implementability as being somehow a better fit for the applications than right. a more traditional right. shuffle. Right. Uh, yeah, that's that's a really interesting question. So another question. So going back to uh, Monero versus the Bitcoin. So is there a way to uh, to implement this over Bitcoin via some contract or something? Some uh, the guys get together to kind of like uh, implement the same functionality. So you you mean like implement this mixing network on Bitcoin? 
Yeah, but I mean, like the, the, the underlying, uh, well, you need the underlying uh, ring signature functionality, right? Uh, right, right, right. Right, so, so to, I, to implement that, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think one naive way to implement that is if you can assume the, uh, a way to uh, anonymous broadcast the output address. So um, if you can broadcast this uh, address uh, beforehand, uh, one and three here can probably use a conjoint transaction to create a, a, a transaction that has two inputs and two outputs. So, so essentially, the, we say that this our but file level is just to argument a uh, smart along mini set, and and along along mini set can be implemented using conjoint. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, it seems reasonable. Yes. I wonder if there is a way to kind of formulate what you do in kind of a more modular, generic way, so that. You won't get this response that oh, you're only building on uh, Monero or nothing else, right? Right, right, right. Yes, yes. And um, well, actually, that's uh, so. Previously, when we submit this paper, we get a uh, comments that uh, uh, this uh, cost of an anonymous broadcast is it, going to be high. So, um, so in this case, we use ring signature so that we don't need to do this anonymous broadcasting of address beforehand. So all, all addresses are only public after they make the transaction on the uh, blockchain. And ring signature provide this uh, benefit of you can create kind of satis satisfying this graph without knowing everybody else output address beforehand. And uh, I think uh, for, for Bitcoin using this protocol, there's another issue is that since we are using uh, noisy address here and the noisy address usually just contain zero value, so Bitcoin has a trans, uh, totally transparent value. But I think they also have talks about in the future to implement Bitcoins with a confidential transaction to hide the uh, transfer value, which I think is really a very important uh, things that they should do for the privacy in the discrete currency. Yeah. 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 No, but I think in general, it would be nice to kind of pinpoint exactly what you need and then you know, present it in the most general kind of abstract way so that you know, say whatever, in, you know, underlying coin mechanism that satisfies it would be good enough. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Any other questions? All right. Cool. This was a lovely talk. I think I declare this first BU Sec Seminar a success. Thanks, Mingyu. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me here. <laughs>